Hello and welcome. Today is going to be a different day. Yes. I'm turning 60 today. I'm turning 18. <laughs> Oh, is it? Yes. Hey, happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, so, we need cake then. Yeah, I think we should have cake. Let's we should buy cake. it. Okay. <laughs> the other thing is that... Te- Less stressful, more hands-on, and uh, I feel there's a good work-life balance. Okay. I am going to be driving to work. Today I've got a morning recess shift, so I'll be taking you through to some of the questions. GP in terms of AMC, what is the correct pathway. Also, I'm working in recess shift today, and today is Arjun, one of the consultants that uh, works with us over from the UK. Uh, his last day, and he'll be moving to a different hospital here in south of Sydney. So I'll finally get a chance to catch up with him in terms of how his experience has been working in Australian emergency compared to that of uh, UK emergency and I think I'll, I'll learn a thing or two. Now as a consultant we normally work here 40 hours a week that is a full-time work and in that 40 hours we get 10 hours of non-clinical time which is spent to you know check up the results to teaching training something sort of a laid-back day uh, in which we do quality improvement and uh, CPD projects. So today is a beautiful day as you can see behind my back and uh, let's take you through dive and take it from there. Thank you. I'm driving to work and I thought I'll utilize this time to talk about a very common question that get asked whether I should pursue MRC GP or whether AMC part one. Let's talk about the MRC GP International or South Asia. MRC GP allows the doctors with good clinical experience in a GP category to come work here in Australia. Most of the GPs who are coming through MRC GP pathway have got a level three supervision, but they can see their own patients, they can manage them. And if the number two is that whenever you're offered a job here, it would be in the area which is called MM2 plus. And MM2 plus technically are regional or rural areas. They are away from the major metropolitan cities like here in Sydney or uh, in um, Melbourne or Brisbane but they are independent towns in themselves. They have got uh, schools, some of them got universities, good hospitals, shopping centers, gyms, and everything is available there. And plus there are good airport links or road links to come and travel to the major cities. Average contract of MRCGP is basically between $250,000 to $275,000, that's cross. It is a training pathway, meaning that after you come and work here, there's a specified time of two years that you will still have to pass your FRAC GP exam. So AMC1 is good for the junior doctors who have got no prior GP experience. It is good for the doctors who are considering pesky pathway. And it's also good for the doctors who don't want to become a GP. They want to go into the specialist pathway. So this is the this is the basic differences between the two. Now, in terms of getting the jobs or job prospect after AMC1, I've always said it is not uh, it is not luck. It is based on your credentials. Like if you've done um, good, uh, if you've got a good CV, if you've got good credentials, if you've got uh, good interview skills, then you will get a job. I had an amazing time out here and hopefully I'll see you all very soon. Why is your last day where are you going now? I'm going to Shell Harbour. Oh, <laughs> and it's, it's my birthday today as well actually. Oh is it? Yes. Hey, happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, so, we need cake then. Yeah, I think we should have cake. Let's we should buy cake. it. Okay. The other thing is that tell me about your assessment process, man. You're from the UK. How things have been from the UK? Oh, I've been part, trying to catch you. This part I'm going to charge. <laughs> I've okay. spent $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> Minimum rate is like $100 an hour. <laughs> so tell me about your assessment process quickly in uh, in less than a minute. Uh, it's a long process, but uh, it's definitely worth it. I would definitely recommend to apply to the college. Mm-hmm. Uh, two parts, one assessment of your initial application and then eligibility for a structured interview. So Arjun, you've come here now, you're working as a consultant. You've worked as a consultant in the UK. Tell me the three top good things and three bad things 
of working in Australia. Working in Australia in emergency medicine as a consultant comparing to your consultant work in the UK in emergency ah, medicine. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely easier. Yeah, yeah. Less stressful, more hands-on, and uh, I feel there's a good work-life balance. Okay. Uh, negatives, I think, if I can just say compared to the UK, it's just, I think there are less guidelines and Possibly that should help in streamlining certain clinical patients. Or maybe it doesn't help because there's so many guidelines you never get the word True, back. but I think it definitely helps juniors to yeah. then kind of help. Otherwise, they're all looking for a consultant to discuss. Mm -hmm. And if it gets busy, there are. And I think definitely a bit more uh, work to be done on uh, triage, I think. Okay. Because that's what we are good at back in the UK, but that's because of our patient numbers. Well, all the best for your upcoming future in Shell Harbour. I'm sure you'll like it. It's very nice there. <laughs> I know, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Yes. I'm turning 60 today. I'm turning 18. <laughs> 21 um, again. Yes. So, thank you very much, guys. It's really, really special to have a work family and then someone you care about. Thank you very much. And it's yeah. Urdu's last day. So, let me not take the limelight away. And I'll take the cake. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank that you. Was and it was a good research. <laughs> we, we had an inferior STEMI, we had like See, a inferior, I, I don't want any inferior, I want superior. <laughs> <laughs> we had like a facial cellulitis impending. To the case, yeah. and there should be like, the people who have got lots of clinical experience, who take exams, who give exams, they are the ones I think so will be better um, teachers in helping you uh, pass the exams in a very systematic way without just studying for 16 to 18 hours in a day. I agree. It's more about smart planning yes, and yes. execution. So it's all about ticking those boxes what they're looking for. That's right. So Relax, take it easy and it's not testing your knowledge to the core and it's not testing your English at the core. So we like as a group we always requested our course coordinator to provide us with clinicians who have who are coming from the hospitals okay. rather than our seniors who have just passed the exam to live in the lectures. And then you found families, you know, sometimes struggling with some of those answers. So we've made this specific program to combat those issues, to give the, the Muslims the evidence and the proofs they need so that everything or any doubt or any misconception can be treated within the family, okay, and in a very engaging and interesting way. All right. So, uh, so just at the end of my shift now, um, I had a busy shift today. I was working in resuscitation area, and we had a varied case mix today. Um, I started out with a patient's uh, full resus, four bedded recesses was completely full. So I've just finished my shift. Uh, it was a busy shift uh, here in emergency department, and. Uh, one thing I wanted to show is that when you are working in a senior capacity, you're not responsible for just one area in emergency department. Obviously, there's a designated area in the emergency department that you're overseeing, but there could be a number of different areas that you're also helping with. So, there you go. So, uh, 
to go home. So by the time I finish here and reach home, it will be about 6.30 because my home is quite far away from this hospital. And uh, that's how the typical day is like. It